The stars. We see them every night. We see them while camping in the woods. We see them when we're far off in the country. We can even see a few during the day. Sometimes we see a whole bunch of them crowding the sky, and sometimes we only see a few. Now it could just be a matter of where you are. Light pollution can alter the number of stars we see at night. For example, in a big city, you can hardly see any stars at all because the lights of the city are affecting it so much. But other causes for why there are sometimes aren't as many stars in the sky can actually be because of the moon. Now, what do we know about the moon? We know it's big and it's in the sky, and it somehow alters the number of visible stars we see at night. But does it really? How do we know that? What exactly does the moon have to do with it? Does it matter what phase of the moon it is? Well, that's why we're here because I recently ran a test to find out. My goal in this test was to count how many visible stars there were in the sky during different moon phases. Now, of course, I didn't count every single star, or I'd be stuck eternally counting stars. I had a very specific method that merely estimated the amount of stars in the sky. So to begin my experiment, I had to split the moon cycle into four parts: the new moon, which is when we can't see the moon because its dark half is facing us; the first quarter moon, which is when one half of the moon is lit, right or left, depending on which hemisphere you live on. For us, it's the right side since we live in the northern hemisphere. Then there's the full moon, which is when the moon is entirely lit, and finally there's the last quarter moon. Which is lit similarly to the first quarter moon, except for us, it's on the left side. I hypothesized that during the new moon there'd be more stars in the sky than there would be during the full moon, and so to test my hypothesis, I followed a simple procedure. My supplies included a notebook with a data table in it, a flashlight, so I wouldn't fall off my deck while trying to get into a decent place to count the stars. And a toilet paper tube, which somehow served as a kind of telescope. My experiment would go over the course of one month, one entire moon cycle. And so, when September 23rd, the new moon came around, I went out to count the stars for the first time. First, I turned off all the lights in my house, much to the annoyance of my family members, so that I could let my eyes adjust to the darkness. Then, holding the tube up to my eye. And looking through it at the sky, I counted how many stars I could see within the small circle of vision. I recorded that number onto my notebook and then continued to repeat that step nine more times in different areas of the night sky. I then found the average of these star counts and multiplied the average by 104. Now that reason for multiplying the average by 104. Is that after calculating a complicated equation, it eventually goes to say that it would take about 104 tubes to fill the sky in our perspective. So after multiplying that average number of star counts by 104, I got the total number of stars we can see at night for that particular phase, which for the new moon ended up being 2,277.6. When I counted the stars on the other three nights, I ended up with this data. For the first quarter moon, I counted about 1,206 stars. The full moon had a count of 665 stars, and the last quarter moon was about 1,726 stars. All right, so we've recorded the number of visible stars there were in each phase of the moon. But what does that mean? Well, looking at the data, we can see that our hypothesis was indeed correct, for the most part. The new moon really did have more visible stars in the sky than the full moon did, like way more. In fact, it's a difference of 1,612 stars, which is huge. And first and last quarter moons, guys, did indeed go between the drastics of the new and full moons, 
but they were quite far apart from each other. So, our conclusion is yes, the moon really does alter the number of stars we can see during the night sky. During the night, the moon's light can change the number of stars we see in the sky by overpowering their feeble light with its own brighter light. On a new moon, there is no moonlight, so there is no opposing light for the stars to be competed with. So they appear brighter. But on a full moon, when the moon is at its brightest, its light overpowers the stars and makes it so that we see fewer stars in the sky. And the same is true during the day. Though, there are few other components that aid the sun in overpowering the star's light almost completely, like the fact that our eyes are adjusted to the sunlight and the retina becomes much less sensitive, meaning it doesn't pick up as much detail. The reason for this is because the iris contracts from the intensity of the sunlight, making it harder to see small things like the stars during the daytime. However, if you just happen to be in a deep well, with dark walls and a small patch of sky on the top, your field of vision would be dark and you may be able to see a few stars during the day. The moon and the stars are indeed fascinating subjects that still generate interest to us to this day. The moon affects us every night and day without our really noticing it. It alters the tides. It alters how well we see at night. And now we know it alters the number of stars we can see in the sky. So the next time you find yourself looking at the stars and the moon, maybe, just maybe, you'll understand its mysteries a little bit more. <laughs>